Hey guys, it's Israel back again with Heavy Metal Reptiles. Um, today we're going to do just kind of a fun video and it's going to be five of our dream reptiles. By our, I mean me and my wife. And my wife refuses to be in any videos, so I'm going to speak on her behalf in the court of law. And uh, we're just going to kind of go over why we want them and what they are. So since my wife kindly cut me off in the first part of the video, I am no longer doing hers. No, I'm just playing. Um, oh yeah, we got Killer Frost because my wife said that he was in enough videos. house is haunted um so anyways uh we got killer frost because my wife said he wasn't in enough videos so we got him out for a minute um number one this is going to be one of my wife's favorite or dream reptiles and it's an anaconda i wanted to put why we one of these animals and the only thing she could give me is because they are like giant puppy dogs and I guess that's kind of what they're portrayed as even though tomato potato just kind of depends with those guys how much time you spend with them and how they're gonna be as they get big um, yeah she didn't really give me a whole lot to talk about uh, we've talked about anacondas in other videos. The reason that it's kind of a dream to have one for her is because she thinks we'll never be able to house it properly with the right size enclosure and water features and things. Uh, I think here in the next five to six years, we'll probably have an anaconda, if we're lucky, along with every other animal on this list. Uh, and that's called riskful thinking. So... Go ahead and move on to my wife's second dream reptile. So we already have a dwarf of this species. It is the super giant leopard gecko. And for people who aren't aware of species and things with leopard geckos. There's no such thing as a dwarf leopard gecko. Uh, Killer Frost here is just beefed up pretty quick. So, um, but super giant leopard gecko is my wife's other dream reptile. I don't know why, because it's literally just this guy, but giant. They get like a foot, not literally. Well, maybe. Close. Yeah, a little smaller than a lychee. A lychianus gecko, from what I've been told. Uh, personally, don't have any interest in owning a giant leopard gecko. I like my little leopard gecko. It would be cool to kind of have to show people a massive one. Uh, not one I would go out of my way for, but because my wife wants it, it'll end up just like this guy, where we get it, and then it becomes my best friend. Huh. Yeah, I like you because you're half alligator. Hey, dude, there's no step there. Uh, you guys almost watched a, him take a tumble. Okay, what are you doing? Um, yeah, so we're going to move on to mine, which will be a little bit more insane for you guys. Okay, so one of my dream reptiles is a rainbow reticulated python. For the exact reason that you would think they're massive and they're hard. I mean, kind of at a point right now where I am looking for challenging reptiles and cool reptiles over top of a morph or 
something common. Obviously, I got my breathing stuff that uh, I'm doing. Dude, my fingers aren't food. Uh, so obviously, I'll stay in the ball pythons and things for a long time. And uh, I'll stay, probably, honestly, get more into these guys, too. I really like the leopard geckos. More crusties. Definitely want a lichianus at some point. Um, but retics are just, they're that big, massive uh, snake that's it's challenging from the time you get it out of its enclosure to the second you put it back. You have to be aware of what you're doing and on your toes. Uh, I've worked with them before, and it's obviously a lot different between helping someone with theirs and working with someone else's than owning your own, where you're the one putting in the rabbit you know, when you feed, you're the one cleaning the cage, you're the one monitoring everything and keeping it tamed down to where you can hold it. Because that's my thing too, is I don't really want an animal that I can't hold and, and hang out with. Obviously a 300 pound reticulated python isn't going to necessarily want to be held like a, well, I don't want to be held, but you can't hold it like you can your normal ball pythons and things. So definitely, uh, kind of my deal with them is they're just beautiful snakes and they're big and a challenge something different so we'll go ahead and move on to my second one so my number four is an American alligator the same kind of reason they're challenging not a lot of people like to keep them and a lot of people that have them end up not being able to ever touch them I would like to be someone who has one and has it in the proper size enclosure and it actually be able to live and thrive in an enclosure with me along with me being able to hold it interact with it and stuff like that frost to make it run for me. Um, I'd like to be able to hold it and interact with it, things like that. So again, it's just another one of those challenges for me, and it's not something you see in everyone's collection. I came in, or become pretty, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, common with the, the reptile hobby and trade. Uh, they, they are bounced around now through all kinds of shows in different places where I live you actually have to carry a license to have caiman or alligators and you have to carry it's like a hundred thousand dollar insurance so again I'd like to say that we would have all these in six five to six years but that's kind of wishful thinking it's kind of push forward and and get as far as we can before we clock out it's just the goal um extremely hard animals to take care of though they require big meals and lots of food along with water and land options so it just I think that's kind of going to be my ultimate challenge is if I ever get to own one someday so we'll move on to number five which is going to be both me and my wife's like dream pet we have together which will probably be the first one out of everyone on this list we get since we both want one so bad So number five is the cowrie tick. And if you've ever seen a cowrie tick squonk, um, then you would know why we want one. They're cool. Again, they're, you know, huge. They're a challenge to take care of. But what really gets me with uh, cow reticulated pythons is they look like Dalmatians instead of cows. But they're cool. I mean, it's a black and white snake and they're ginormous. I mean, that's the thing with Retex. I think that's why everybody that has them or wants one, wants one is because they're just so big. The cow Retex, they have an iridescence kind of to them 
when they hit the light right and you never know how they're going to fully end up some of them end up definitely more black than white some of them end up with more white than black and you don't know it's just as they age when they shed the colors change and things happen it's cool it's it's just something different you know that's one of those that like the cheapest baby I found on them so far I think has been like $800 but to get like a sub adult that's already around that 10 foot mark they're like I think the cheapest one of those I saw was right around two grand a full adult is running no less than four and with retics it's kind of the same thing as like green tree pythons or um kind of a lot of those specialty snakes is there's only a few people that I know of in the pet trade that's really reputable to go through uh, a lot of them are can't say they're bed, bred badly but they just you don't know what kind of conditions they're coming from and it's a lot of money to throw out a snake and get you know a dead snake you know, not saying that you know you can't mess something up after you get it, but you just want to make sure you're going through a reputable person. So, we're gonna go ahead and go to the outro on this, and I'm actually gonna throw in some information uh, that you guys might be able to use here at the end. So, I've talked a little bit before about mixing up your reptile's diet, and I've talked about watching as they eat so today we decided to give zoom the florida king a anole because in florida they actually eat the anoles that run around there so bought a green anole if, if you've seen them at pet stores before they're 10 bucks they aren't that expensive fed it to him and he ate himself like literally bit and ate himself I had to get him off of himself that happened like twice and not only that but the anole fought back pretty hard it ended up being one of those things where I had to hold the anole there and let zoom do his thing zoom wrapped it up it was really interesting to see how he went about it uh, that's why I say it's good to kind of mix up the uh uh, diets as it gives them that kind of mental stimulation of being in like a wild setting because it's something native to where he comes from and he would have eaten if he was back in Florida so uh, long story short that's a big example or a good example of why I talk about uh, watching while they're eating this guy was actually latched on two zooms face it was Stressful. I got him off pretty quick. No damage was done to Zoom. He's not hurt. The anole. The Zoom slurped him like a noodle. And yeah, it all come out well. It was just something I wanted to throw in here at the video. Kind of an experience that I had. I've had rats and mice attack uh, snakes before. It's the first time that I've tried something along the like the, the more wild uh, diet that wasn't frozen usually stuff like that I'd get frozen and feed to them uh, if they're taken but I just want to kind of share that with you guys and, and why it's so important to watch when you're feeding it was a ooh, half hour to an hour I was in there dealing with this and it all turned out well but like I said that's why you kind of got to sit there and watch jeez when I can't pop it pops um, so yeah so normal outro you know reach out to me let me know what videos you guys want to see let me know how I can make these videos a little bit better more entertaining for you guys to watch I know it's a lot of just sitting here talking and uh, facts being thrown at you so if you guys got ideas on how I can make the videos a little bit better make them a little easier to watch and get the information across still feel free to, to shoot me a message on Instagram or comment on the video and let me know um, Links to all the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is in the bio. Again, I haven't been really messing with Facebook and Twitter because no one's following anything on there. Uh, Instagram, though, I'm constantly posting uh, pictures of the animals with little 
stories or whatever. So check me out on there and uh, yeah, I think that's kind of everything I got. Like, subscribe, and comment because that's what everyone tells you to do. And uh, rock on, friends. I'll see you in the next video.